Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on what time of the day it is, wherever you are. Today I'm going to show you how to use the dupli displacement map filter in Photoshop by uh, creating a rock texture image, much like this one here. So I'm going to show you how to A, add a rock texture, and B, use the displacement map filter in Photoshop. I'm going to grab this rock texture image here, which is royalty free, I'll put the link in the description. And I've got it saved here. I'm going to apply it to my face. So to start off with, we need to select the channel. So each image has three channels, red, green, and blue. We need to select the one that has the most contrast in. With faces, it tends to be green. Red's rubbish because it's all blown out. And blue can be a bit flat. So green has lots of nice contrasts. So we'll go for green. Right click, duplicate channel. Document new, that's fine, we'll just leave that. And then this is going to be our displacement map. So we'll go filter, noise, median, usually a couple of pixels, two or three is that is fine. And then we add Gaussian blur, Gaussian blur, I don't know how you pronounce this. Uh, you don't want to keep the details, but you don't want to blur it like that. <laughs> so that looks pretty good, I think. We'll go ahead and we'll save it. This is our displacement map. Come back to our image. Click on RGB, show everything. Now we need to make a selection of my face. So I'll come in here. Maybe start at this corner. I like to use the pen tool, which is this tool here. And just draw around the face to make a selection. Up here with the hair, um, don't worry about trying to get everything perfect because you'll be able to see a bit through the hair anyway, but not perfectly, so I've got a technique I'll show you that later, like this bit here for example. So carry on drawing around the face, don't be, you know, too rough, but don't try and be super neat because it's not worth it, a rough, fairly rough mask will work fine. Lovely double chin. And nearly done. There we go. So right click, make selection. Uh, one pixel, new selection is good. That's our selection of the face. What we don't want is for the texture to go over the eyes though. So we'll draw around these with the pen tool and we'll subtract them from the selection. Right click, make selection, subtract one. one pixel feathering. Same with this eye. Right click, make selection, subtract. That looks uh, fairly good. So we'll go to select, save selection, we'll just call it face. It's fine, then we'll go to our displacement map here. No, sorry, we'll go to our texture. And we'll press Control A for select all, Control copy, Control C, Control V, paste it here. You can see now this is pasted onto our image. Uh, it's a bit big, so I'll scale it down a bit. I like, I'm going to rotate it like that because I want these cool vein textures over my face. So that looks pretty good. Hit enter to save rate changes. Then we need to go to our channel, control click on face. This is the selection we saved earlier. Layers, and we'll click the layer mask button. And there we go, we're done. Thanks for watching. And no, I'm kidding. So we've got our texture and it fits the face. And if we want the blending mode, set that to like overlay or soft light. It can give you good results. Overlay is usually the best. I mentioned like this bit up here, but it looks a bit odd. So we'll click on the layer mask, grab the brush tool. And coming up here, make sure it's no hardness and low opacity as well and we'll make it uh, white and we can just paint over here and it like gently adds it back in and the same with this bit here and in here there we go, that's better now 
This is looking pretty good, but we haven't done the displacement map yet. Like, if you watch this line here, it just goes straight across with no regard for the actual face itself. So we'll, we need to unlink the layer mask and the image so the layer mask isn't affected by the displacement map. So let's select the image, filter, and distort, displace. Default settings are normally fine. And we'll select our displacement map.psd. And that looks a lot better. You saw how it changed then? Go back, redo, undo, redo. You see it molds to the face, like this vein here. Or this one here fits with the eye. That's looking pretty good. I mean, the main image is done. I mean, there's still more work we could do for it. Could make it look cool. And to make it look cool, I have this technique which I'll show you. So I'll duplicate the background image. This is our face. This is our texture. I'll lock that in the background. Face. So we need to draw around the foreground with the pen tool, like this. You probably want to be a bit neat with this because your edge will look, your edge depends quite a bit on um, how it'll look. So we made a selection of the foreground, we'll right click, make selection on one pixel, and then we're going to make this a layer mask. And what we're going to do is we want to blur out the background, so we'll unlock it. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur, Gaussian blur, don't know how to pronounce that. Now the thing is, if you just blur this out now, you get this kind of haloing, is that what it's called? Haloing, fringing around the edge here where the actual person's been blurred out as well. So we'll cancel that. So do this, I'll click on the eye. All we have to do is we have to um, grab the clone stamp tool. I'll click here with no hardness. We just need to paint around the edge just to suppress the edge of it and push it in and that way it doesn't get blurred out and it doesn't you don't get the halo fringing stuff. So just go around the edge here, and we'll just push in the edge, just like that. Don't worry about being too precise, because this is all going to be blurred out anyway. As long as you get the general colours right, it'll probably be fine. There we go. Now it looks kind of weird if we turn back on the face, but that doesn't matter because it's already blurred out. So turn these two back on. Background, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, Gaussian blur. And let's blur it out maybe five or six pixels. And that looks, that looks already a lot better. See? It really makes the foreground stand out. And we might select the face layer mask and go to select the fine mask. And then, uh, just here on the edge, you might shift the edge back a bit to crop this in. I uh, could try a feather a tad, smooth it a bit. Can't try. Let's just play with these until it looks good. Okay, that looks fine. Mm, got two copies and delete the old one. Face. Okay, we're nearly done. Last thing I like to do, I'll cut the, add color correction and that kind of thing. So we'll make a new layer above the background. Wrong button. Uh, new layer. And we'll call it lens flare. Quick way to put a lens flare in: hit D on your keyboard. That sets these to black and white. D, then X, which switches them. 
and then control backspace. We'll fill this in black. Then we can go filter, render, lens flare. About here is good. And then quite high brightness. Uh, maybe re render it just a little bit lower. Lens flare just a bit further down like that. That looks better. And then we'll set this to screen. That looks good. It just gives us something which uh, makes us focus on the foreground, I think. And then we could make another oops, make another new layer. This is the vignette. Um, we'll fill this in black as well. Same DX control back this. And then we'll grab the elliptical marquee tool, just like that, so it's nearly filled. Refine edge, no hang on, cancel. Control, sh control shift I will reverse it, same here. Inverse. So we want this bit to be selected. And we'll feather it or load, so like 100 pixels, and shift the edge one way, like that. So we get a bit of a vignette. And then we'll click layer mask. That looks good. And what else could we do? Color correction. So we'll add another curves layer. This is the key bit. Pull this down. Pull this up. Or, if you want a better way to do it, click on the hand. Click on the light bits. Like, uh, well not fully white, but like here. So if like, you see as I move over, it shows where it is on the on the line. So I'll come over like here, click and try to get, push that up a bit. And we'll click on the dark bits like the hair and pull that down a bit. That's the idea that looks a bit bolder. And then the red, red is important if you decrease the red a bit. It starts to look a bit more cinematic like that. Go to the blue. Blue's a tricky one, you can either make it cool or warmer. Well, I quite like warm. I think that looks quite good. Maybe go back to the RGB. Come here and lighten it a tad more. Bring this uh, just like that. There we go. I think we're done now. That looks pretty awesome, to be honest. Uh, 16 minutes of recording. Mm. I'll speed up. Well, I'll cut out the boring bits. I think that's all I have to say. So, um, thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, go and look at my portfolio of work. Uh, look at my website, look at my channel. That's it. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.